Hello and welcome back if you're an existing subscriber. If you are new to my channel, I'm currently making videos about the new Canon mirrorless camera systems. Now this video is going to show you how to create a custom menu setup. But before I start this video, I would like to mention some of my previous videos about how to set up and customize the Canon R5, R6 and other Canon mirrorless cameras with custom shooting modes for wildlife photography. Another of my videos goes into more detail about how to customize and program the camera for back button focusing if you prefer to shoot sports and wildlife with that type of setup. Another video explains how to make some essential changes to the default settings of the camera from its factory setup. And finally, I made a short video showing how all of this is put into practice in the real world after a recent safari trip to Tanzania. This tutorial is really an extension of the previous videos on how to customize the camera to enable a more efficient and productive workflow. So let's get started. Under the green tab in the main menu, you will find a section called My Menu. This is where we will create a quick menu setup to help change commonly used settings that can be difficult to find or locate within the main menu. Also, this will help to make certain settings easier to change that haven't already been assigned to a custom control on the camera's body. We can add up to six settings for quick access. If you scroll across the green tab, you'll find three secondary tabs, one, two, and three. You'll notice that one and two are configurable, while three allows you to add more menu tabs. Just press the set button on the camera to select menu three option. You can add as many as five quick menus. We will scroll back to the first configurable menu tab. Press the set button on the camera to configure the menu, then select items to register to the quick menu. As you can see, the entire menu system can be found in one long continuous list. This selectable list of settings and operations follows the menu order from shooting modes, uh, autofocus modes, playback, wireless features, setup, and finally custom functions. Going back to the green section, my menu, I will select the first item to add to my wildlife quick menu. That will be the ISO speed settings. Just press the set button on the camera to select and then scroll across and hit OK. That is the first item added to the list. For the next item, I will actually scroll back up and select image quality. For the third item, I will scroll quite a long way down through the shooting modes and select shutter mode. This will allow me to quickly change the shutter mode from mechanical, electronic first curtain and electronic. For the next menu item, I'm going to scroll even further past shooting modes into autofocus settings and select subject to detect. In the previous videos, I mentioned at the start, a lot of the autofocus controls would have been assigned to custom controls and back button setup. So this serves as a useful way to extend that customization of the camera for easy access. The fifth item is not far away within the autofocus section. I will select the tracking sensitivity to allow me to adjust the autofocus tracking when the subject moves away from the AF points when in servo mode. The sixth and final option I'm going to select is quite a long way down the full menu selection and can be found in the custom function section. I will select set shutter speed range. We can only assign up to six items per menu, so if you try to add another, you will see an error message on the screen. However, we can change the selected items at a later time. I will go through the reason for the selections, uh, starting with the ISO speed settings. Here I can quickly change the minimum and maximum ISO speed range, and also the automatic ISO speed range. Uh, this may be useful to change depending on what subjects you're photographing at certain times of the day. For image quality, I may want to quickly change between RAW and C-RAW depending on what I'm trying to photograph and especially if memory card space is limited. In shutter mode, I can quickly change between mechanical, 
electronic first curtain and electronic. Again, completely dependent on the subject matter. For birds in flight, electronic shutter may be a better option and to reduce any rolling shutter effects, the mechanical shutter might work better. Uh, electronic first curtain is usually my default. In the autofocus section, I added subject to detect. This allowed me to change between the various options that Canon has provided us with. Whether they actually make any difference or not, I would be able to change this setting depending on my subject matter. The tracking sensitivity uh, can now be accessed quickly if I feel the need to make adjustments depending on the situation, environment and subject matter. If you press the info button on the back of the camera, you will find a more detailed explanation about the tracking sensitivity menu option. The last option I've added is the set shutter speed range. This is because it was added as part of the custom setup for wildlife photography in my previous video. I will need to change this setting quite often throughout a day of shooting, depending on the type of day, the time of day, the environment and subject matter. For example, if it's a bright sunny day and I'm out photographing birds in flight, I can set the minimum shutter to be no lower than one one thousandth of a second to allow me to constrain the camera settings. I find that this just makes it easier and faster to work. Of course, these are all completely subjective. All items can be changed or another menu can be configured as an extension for this menu tab. For example, one item that might be worth adding in place of an existing autofocus option is the servo AF options. This selection allows you to cycle through four autofocus presets. This could be more useful than changing the tracking sensitivity. Uh, just for example, you might want to change that over. We can't add another until we first remove one from the existing quick menu list. To do that, we go to the configure tab at the bottom then scroll to delete selected items and then select the item to be deleted. Just select OK and press the set button on the camera. We can also sort the menu items in order. From the configure tab, select sort registered items using the set button. This will allow you to move items up and down using the set button and the scroll wheel on the back of the camera. We can delete all the items within the tab and we can also delete uh, the entire tab if it's no longer required. We can also rename the tab to something that's much easier to understand and differentiate from other tabs that you might create in the future. For this quick menu, I'll call it Wildlife 01. Now I can select the second tab and start to configure another quick menu following the exact same process. Uh, now this could be for a completely different setup, it could be maybe for a time lapse, it could be for aperture priority, uh, single focus mode. It really depends on what you want to set up. It could even be for uh, uh, video recording modes. Now it's worth noting that these quick menu setups will work independently from any custom shooting modes, which are the C1, C2 and C3 options on the mode selection dial uh, that you may have previously set up or are in the process of setting up. The My Menu section is still accessible regardless of whether you're in a C mode or aperture, shutter, manual, etc. However, some settings may be greyed out if they are not relevant to the shooting mode that's been selected. For example, if you have one shot autofocus mode selected, the tracking sensitivity would be greyed out as this is no longer relevant to one point focusing. However, if you are currently working within a custom shooting mode, what you have selected within your quick menu will be saved within that custom shooting mode as long as auto update set has been enabled. All of your settings will be remembered when you change back to your custom shooting mode. Also on the R5, the shooting mode selection is set digitally using the top mode dial and button with three modes assigned for both photo and video. However, on the R6, the shooting modes are set using the more conventional style mode selection dial with only three modes available. Take some time to watch this video to find out how to set up a custom shooting mode and how to set the camera to automatically save any changes that you have made while operating the camera. Then combine this method of customization with a quick menu setup for an extra personal touch to your camera operations.